I for daughter, you know. She's fit to wed. Oh, so fit. Come on. Faster. Giddy up. Slower. Let's go. Come on. What's that about? The dressings, bandages, where did I put them? Forget it. Bandages won't do him any good. What? Oh, but he breathed still a moment ago. Mm-hmm. Breathed his last then. Bled to death. Legs broken. Femoral arteries ruptured. Wound like that, you're dead in minutes. Gods. What happened here, exactly? I... 
I was rolling through, fully loaded, when I heard screams. This one crawled towards the road, then drooped to the ground, lost consciousness. I jumped down to help him, dress his wounds. Then you appeared. Pretty admirable stopping to help a stranger. Truthfully, when I saw him, I considered it might be an ambush. The thought entered my mind, I near decided to crack the whip. But to abandon a man in need, it's simply not the decent thing to do. Decent enough in many other places, believe me. Before you go on, clean your hands thoroughly and burn your shirt. Might also want to rub some time on your body to be sure. The smell of blood might attract ghouls otherwise. Who? Who might you be, precisely? A witcher. Oh. Uh, 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 do, do, do you expect some beast might have killed him? See what we have here. Legs broken, but cause of death's the wound. Small but deep, edges unfrayed. Either a thrust weapon or a thick claw. Maybe a wyvern's. Tough to say, and... Mmm. Breastplate's unusual. Dented. And it's got a patina. An antiquity, I believe. I deal in these things, so... Uh, what's puzzling is... Why did he done it? Not likely to learn that from him. Now to figure out where he came from. From that house, I'm assuming, but need to investigate. Got some work to do. So... So long. Wait! I will come with you! Gotta be kidding. This isn't a garden romp. Whatever killed him's damn dangerous and... And, and it might still prowl the area, so if it's all the same, I'd prefer to accompany you. Hmm, so be it. But stay close, keep it down, and don't touch a thing. to death. Over a dozen blows with a sharp object. Some post-mortem. I cannot believe this the work of a man. It was a monster, to be sure. Silver tableware. Often engravings. What the hell's this? Setting for a banquet? It seems so. What's your suspicion? Did none survive? Gods! Torso punctured with great force. Blow pierced hardened steel. Man on the high road. Breastplate was identical. Throats massacred. One mighty blow. Shield along sides old and dented. Swords ceremonial. And Shea handiwork clearly. Ceremonial bowls for little sacrifices. Of what? Please do not say humans.
strong stench. Multiple wounds on the body. All puncture wounds, but hard to tell what caused them. Victim's human, but the attire's elven. Are you certain? How did he come by it? We've so few non-humans in Tucson. my defender and protector. Thou bringest good news. Fled, then dropped to the ground to douse the flames. Didn't manage. Burnt smells growing fainter. Might have been another luckier soul managed to flee. Doublet scorched. Wriggled out of it, tossed it, then ran on. Perhaps there's no one inside after... I know you're in there. Breathing's loud and clear. <clears throat> Open up. We mean you no harm. Listen, I'm a witcher. I'm here to help you. But if that's gonna happen, you gotta answer some questions first. You mentioned them. Who do you mean? Those... I, I don't know what they were. Spirits... It all occurred to a sudden. We were staging a scene. The, the, the death of being homage. There was a flash of light that blinded me completely. I heard cries, though saw nothing. Then felt my own robes were in flames. I broke and ran, threw off my doublet, leapt in here and it shut and locked the door behind me. They pounded on the door. I, I, I thought they would get through. I, I thought I was done for, but, but in the end, it, uh, it grew calm. Who are you exactly? D Durant Faucher Plamondon de Safaran. Lord of these lands, and chairman of the Society of Friends of the History of Tuton. We meet here annually to mark the anniversary of the Elfin Homage. But something like this, why, it's a first. Hmm. So while reenacting a scene from the past, somehow, unintentionally, you summoned a specter, a Korgorath, or a tube, maybe. What? What now? Best thing? You gotta do it again, of course. Are you mad? Would you have this thing kill us? No, don't want it to kill anyone. Precisely why I gotta do my job. Summon it again, whatever it is, and tend to it once and for all. Durand, think I can reenact the pledge? The giving of homage, alone? It was a great, momentous event. The surrender of Tucson's last elfin king. You will need at least three individuals. You know what I'm gonna ask for. Need your help. But I'll understand if you turn me down. No objections? Good. Let's get to work. Start by clearing the corpses. Got some time. Won't start the reenactment before nightfall. Things of this sort are a lot more likely to work after dusk. One last thing, though. My pay. Don't work for free, you know. Understood. Just keep the danger at bay, and I shall be generous. Through and through.
I will stand, or rather, sit in for King Ludwig upon the Elfin throne, while you, Witcher, will play the Enche ruler. We must don the costumes. All must be just right. The Vethaf, the Elfin King, hosted Ludwig in his own palace upon his own throne amidst the blinding glow of a plethora of torches. thus granting humans rule over seat-yielding lands. The Becca filled the ornate ceremonial bowls with elven wine. Gwynoet, the sweetest blood of the land that had been torn from him. Long last, the Elfin King grasped his sword and shield, thus symbolically passing command of his armies to humans. and dropped to his knees, thus acknowledging his final defeat. Don't interrupt. Lutovic then spake. I accept your allegiance and shall return in one year's time to... Ah! Look! Look! The statues! Impossible! God's mother!
The sculptures, they came alive. By what witchcraft? Dunno. Specialize in killing monsters. Reviving them, not so much. I... I may know what happened. The statues, you see, once stood in the palace of one Defethov. I acquired them a month past because uh, perhaps I should start at the beginning. This Devethev was to pay tribute to humans, producing statues of this sort each year. Yet he did so but once, for he perished in the massacre of non-humans at the foot of Mount Gorgon in the year 782. It's fortunate he did too, as Devethev had planned Lutefek's downfall, for he sculpted not statues, but columns that masqueraded as such. Columns activated with words said in homage. Columns that would have turned the king and his bodyguards into so much colorful confetti. Typical treachery embodied elves. Pshit. You're no better. Elves were just defending their territory. You humans took it, but you still weren't sated. Had to cut the elves down every last one. You? What does that mean? You're a man as we are. Yeah, in a way. Just a shame to have to admit it sometimes. Your words? They're wrong, Witcher. But I'll not let you leave empty-handed. Take this. Reward. Farewell. Come on. Slower. Whoa, 
there, Roach. Run, Roach. Guests, never a good omen.
subpar guests. Never a good omen. See you gather before me. guests. Never a good omen. Some kind of rhythm, a message, trying to tell me something. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right.
Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. Die. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. She was changing into a monster, recorded it in her diary. Poignant. Smashed mirror. As if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves. The monster. Journal's author, maybe? Spoon's incredible. The craftsmanship must have graced a rich man's table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally, still searching for the right spoon. Spoon, pretty ordinary, maybe a little old. There's a description. White's a true collector. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. name scratched into this wooden spoon. Romantic. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It'd make sense. No claw or fang marks. Probably choked to death. Broken neck. Indentation in the skull's lateral surface. Smacked in the head with something heavy. Right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Actually does seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Why it's not particularly tidy. 
White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse. And it's been trying desperately to lift it. empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. I'm afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. to spy your reflection in the mirror. We can't use spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons.
it worked. Just not quite like I expected. Need to see what happened to the white. Won't be hard to find given its stench. someplace safe. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon.
she's small. Do you know any who's not heard of our wines? A witcher. Think your friend's hand will make for a nice broth? Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our Codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Send your spies after me? My watchers. Were something to go wrong, I could then arrive quickly to help. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned a last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help, right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement, but, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. How will we handle that? I'd rather not have you lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I've thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. Right. So what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Little expedition starting to sound dangerous. Think I'd better prepare. I understand completely. Do tell me when you're ready to set off. <laughs> 